This video is brought to you by Picmonic. Picmonic helps you memorize and retain information for a long period of time, especially if you are a visual learner like me. Today is the second video about microbiology by Picmonic, so let's get started. Microbiology literally means the study of small forms of life. We have bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. And that's why we have bacteriology, fungology, virology, and parasitology. Today it's bacteriology, video number two. We classify bacteria based on the Gram stain. Gram was the name of a scientist, by the way. That's why it should be a capital G. Gram stain. It's either gram positive or gram negative. Gram positive bacteria are purple. Gram negative are pink. And then we divide the gram positive into gram positive cocci and gram positive rods. Same thing with the gram negative. Gram positive, gram negative, cocci and rods. And then the cocci are catalase positive or catalase negative. Catalase positive, such as the staph, catalase negative, such as the strep. And then the rods are divided not based on the catalase, but based on spore formation. Are they spore forming or non spore forming? In the previous video, I've talked about the non spore forming, such as Listeria, Corynebacterium diphtheria, Nocardia, and Actinomyces israeli. Today, we'll talk about the other ones, the spore forming bacteria. We have aerobic and anaerobic. The anaerobic is further subdivided into motile and non motile bacteria. Motile are the Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium difficile. The non motile are the Clostridium perfringens. These are the four bacteria that we will discuss today. Clostridium tetani is illustrated in this picmonic as the classroom on the Titanic. In the story of the ill-fated ship and its oft-forgotten classroom, where children kept up with their studies while at sea. Clostridium tetani is a pathologic bacterial species responsible for tetanus, a disease characterized by painful, prolonged muscle spasms occurring after traumatic implantation of bacterial spores into tissues. Moreover, it is a major cause of infant mortality in underdeveloped countries, resulting from umbilical cord contamination during unsanitary delivery, coupled with a lack of maternal immunization. Now, these bacteria stain gram-positive, represented by the gram-cracker positive angel, and because of their rod shape, they are classified as bacilli, the rod. Like the other Clostridium species, these bacteria are obligate anaerobes, depicted by the ant in a robe, meaning they cannot survive in the presence of oxygen. Once inoculated in their host, these organisms release tetanospasmin, a potent exotoxin portrayed by the bursting toxic balloon. These bacteria are spore-forming, shown as the spores, and patients typically become infected after exposure of a wound to dirt or rust as these spores are resilient and heat-resistant, allowing them to survive the elements for extended periods of time. After penetrating the host, the rapidly produced toxins act at the presynaptic membranes of inhibitor motor nerve endings of Renshaw cells in the spinal cord, pictured here as the Renshaw wrench in the ocean. The tetanus toxin blocks inhibitor signals by interfering with the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters, specifically blocking glycine and GABA release shown as the glycine glacier and GABA goose with the stop sign. As a result of unopposed muscle contractions and spasms, represented as the spasm spaceship, patients develop rigidity. Characteristic features include rhesus sardonicus, the sardine smile, which is an abnormal, sustained spasm of the facial muscles that appears to produce grinning. Those infected with tetanus also display lockjaw, the locked jaw, which is also referred to as trismus, along with opisthotonus, depicted as the severe hyperextension of the pistol body, and this term describes severe hyperextension of the head, neck, and spinal column. So, let's take another look at Clostridium tetani, which leads to tetanus in infected patients. This organism is a gram-positive bacillus, which cannot survive in the presence of oxygen, making it an obligate anaerobe. Clostridium tetani produces tetanospasmin, a potent exotoxin, leading to severe effects in those infected. And remember that these bacteria are spore-forming. The toxin produced acts at inhibitor motor nerve endings in Renshaw cells in the spinal cord, working to block glycine and GABA release. This leads to spasms in patients, and classic physical exam findings such as rhesus sardonicus, lockjaw, and opisthotonus. And if you want to strengthen your memory, use your memory. So let's be proactive and practice active recall. Clostridium tetani is a gram-positive bacillus. 
It's an anaerobe, it has an exotoxin and it's spore forming. It affects Renshaw cell in the spinal cord, inhibits GABA and glycine. GABA and glycine are inhibitory. When you inhibit the inhibitory, you are excitatory, which will lead to spasm, rhesus sardonicus, lockjaw, and opisthotonus, which is severe hyperextension. Clostridium botulinum is a bacterium described in this picmonic by the classroom bottles, which are a tool used by the substitute teacher to entertain his class. This bacteria is a bacillus, represented by the rod, which stains gram-positive, shown as the gram-cracker-positive angel. This organism is anaerobic, depicted by the ant robe, meaning it prefers to grow in the absence of oxygen. Additionally, Clostridium botulinum is spore-forming, the spores, allowing it to survive in unfavorable states. It can survive high temperatures and is found in the soil as an endospore. Despite this bacteria's resilience, it produces a neurotoxin, which is destroyed at temperatures greater than 100 degrees Celsius, called heat labile toxin, shown as the heat lamp melting toxin. Normally, this toxin is very potent, working to inhibit acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction, illustrated as the inhibiting chains on the acetyl cola at the NMJ neuromuscular junction. Adult botulism is often associated with ingestion of food in which Clostridium botulinum spores have been allowed to germinate in anaerobic conditions. Thus, adults are often affected after eating canned foods, represented literally as the canned food. In contrast, infant botulism is often associated with consumption of bacteria spores in honey, shown as the spores in the honey jar. Now, inhibition of acetylcholine release from these bacteria causes a descending flaccid paralysis, the down arrow wheelchair. Adult disease from foodborne exposure and wound infection leads to paralysis that typically begins with the muscles in the face. This leads to symptoms of diplopia, the double eyes, and ptosis, the toast eyes, which describes eyelid drooping. Infant botulism begins 18 to 36 hours after the toxin enters the baby's body, and infants display floppy movements due to muscle weakness and trouble controlling the head. This is aptly described as floppy baby syndrome, shown as the floppy baby in the diaper, though one of the first signs we see in infants is constipation, the corked con toilet. So in quick review, Clostridium botulinum is a bacillus-shaped bacterium which stains gram-positive. It is an anaerobe that is spore-forming. Clostridium botulinum forms a heat labile toxin which inhibits acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction. Infection in adults occurs after exposure to bacteria in canned food, while infants develop disease after exposure to spores in honey. Those affected develop a descending flaccid paralysis with symptoms starting in the face like diplopia and ptosis. Infants, on the other hand, resemble a floppy baby, with constipation often being the initial presenting symptom. Clostridium botulinum is a bacillus that happened to be gram-positive. It's an anaerobe, it makes spore and a heat labile toxin. And that's why if you're worried that your tuna can might be damaged, it's a very good idea to cook it, because it's a heat labile toxin. It will kill the freaking Clostridium botulinum. Adult poisoning canned food, infant poisoning, honey because of the spores. How does that toxin work? It inhibits acetylcholine release from the nerve endings, leading to flaccid paralysis. Now please contrast that with the previous one, Clostridium tetani, which had spastic paralysis. Now here it is flaccid. As a result, you develop diplopia, floppy baby, ptosis, and constipation. Clostridium difficile, illustrated in this picmonic as a classroom with differential equations, is a gram-positive organism, the gram-cracker-positive angel, which exists as normal flora in the gut. Clostridium difficile is a bacillus, shown as the rod, and is anaerobic, pictured here as the ant robe, meaning it survives without the presence of oxygen. This organism can lead to severe diarrhea when normal flora in the gut is killed by antibiotics like clindamycin and ampicillin, represented by the cleaning mice and the ant pencil. Clostridium difficile releases two toxins that can damage the intestine. Toxin A is an enterotoxin, depicted by the apple with toxic green glow, which damages the brush border of the gut, seen as the damaged toilet brush. Meanwhile, toxin B is a cytotoxin, shown by the bee with a side toe, that is toxic green, which induces actin depolymerization, leading to damage of the cytoskeletal structure of cells, portrayed by the damaged actin and microtubule cytoskeleton of the toilet. This toxin is very destructive because it disturbs the signaling pathways between cells and leads to transmembrane pores in cells. Now, C. diff infections are characterized by the development of watery rice stool diarrhea, the toilet, which typically has a characteristic foul smell.
It is the most common cause of pseudomembranous colitis, depicted by the sumo membra colon, and in severe cases can lead to toxic megacolon, illustrated by the megacolon character. Because this bacteria is part of the normal gut flora in many patients, C. diff infection should be diagnosed via detection of toxins in the stool, as opposed to culture, shown by the test tube with toxins and stool. Treatment begins with metronidazole as a first-line drug, the metronite, with oral vancomycin used as a second-line therapy, or in severe disease, illustrated as the van tank mice. So let's quickly review Clostridium difficile, or C. diff. This is a gram-positive bacillus, which is an anaerobe that is normally found in the gut. Disease occurs when the normal flora overgrows in the intestines, often when these microbes are killed through administration of clindamycin and ampicillin. These bacteria produce toxin A, which is an enterotoxin that damages the brush border of the gut. They also produce toxin B, which is a cytotoxin that damages cell cytoskeletal structure. C. diff infections are characterized by watery diarrhea and development of pseudomembranous colitis. Furthermore, severe cases can lead to toxic megacolon. Because this is a normal gut flora, diagnosis is made when we detect toxins in the stool. We treat C. diff with metronidazole, or in some cases, oral vancomycin. Clostridium difficile is a gram-positive rod. It's an anaerobe. It's usually caused by antibiotics, mainly clindamycin and ampicillin, the cleaning mice and the amplifier pencil. It produces two nasty toxin. Toxin A is an enterotoxin. Toxin B is a cytotoxin. Toxin A, what do you mean by enterotoxin? I damage the brush border of your intestine. What do you mean by toxin B, which is cytotoxin? I am toxic to the cell. I cause actin depolymerization, which will damage the cytoskeletal structure. I cause three main diseases, diarrhea, pseudomembranous colitis, and toxic megacolon. How should you diagnose me? Most people will say, oh, you can just detect it in the stool culture. No, 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 no. The purpose is not to detect the bacteria. The purpose is to detect the toxins in the stool. And then how do you treat it? I saw it in Bikmonic seven years ago, and I've never forgot since. The metro and the van, the metronidazole and the vancomycin. So we have two antibiotics that can cause it and two antibiotics that can treat Clostridium difficile. What are the two antibiotics that can cause it? Clindamycin and ampicillin. What are the two antibiotics that can treat it? The van and the metro, vancomycin, metronidazole. Clostridium difficile, recently renamed Clostridioides difficile by the CDC, is a condition that causes inflammation of the colon. C. diff treatments are varied and depend both on disease severity and whether the disease is recurrent or not. You can recall them with this picmonic about various students trying to defeat the classroom of differential equations with their vehicles. Oral vancomycin, the oral van tank mice responding, is a common choice for the initial treatment of C. difficile infection. Of note, it must be administered orally because the intravenous form will not reach high enough levels in the GI tract. Vancomycin is also an option for both recurrent and severe infections. Fidaxomycin, the FedEx mice, is another antibiotic effective against C. diff. It can be used for initial or recurrent disease and is more effective than metronidazole. One downside, however, is that this antibiotic is expensive. Metronidazole, the metronite, is another option for treating C. diff, although it is less effective than the other antibiotics. It can be used intravenously for severe disease and is still used first line in many parts of the world due to its affordability. For patients with persistent Clostridium difficile infection, refractory to multiple courses of antibiotics, a stool transplant or fecal microbiota transplant can be considered, shown by the stool train plant. This procedure instills healthy donor stool into the patient's GI tract, which replenishes the normal gut microbiome and can help treat persistent C. diff colonization. So in summary, C. diff infection can be treated in multiple ways. Oral vancomycin is effective for initial, recurrent, and severe disease. Fidaxomycin is also effective, but is an expensive medication. Metronidazole is the least effective, but is still used for severe disease and first line in many parts of the world. A stool transplant or fecal microbiota transplant can be considered for patients with persistent infection refractory to multiple rounds of treatment. 
Now, let's treat the C. difficilitis. 1. The van, vancomycin. And then don't forget the metro, metronidazole. The new drug, which is kind of expensive, fidoxamycin, the FedEx guys. And then you can try stool transplant, which is fecal transplant, which is fecal microbiota transplant. Clostridium perfringens is a bacterial species depicted in this picmonic as the classroom perfume in a scene where the classroom is disrupted when it fills with gas. This bacterium is gram-positive, the gram-cracker-positive angel, and is a bacillus, represented by the rod, describing the organism's shape. Clostridium perfringens prefers to grow in an environment without oxygen, or an anaerobic environment, illustrated as the ant robe. C. perfringens is capable of forming spores when in an unfavorable environment, depicted by the spores as these girls' heads. These bacteria are clinically relevant due to the production of multiple exotoxins, the most important being alpha-toxin lecithinase, shown as the afro on the lace-thin lady. Alpha-toxin lecithinase contains phospholipase, represented by the phospholipid bilayer, which works to destroy phospholipids in the cell membranes of those infected. Additionally, Clostridium perfringens produces a heat labile enterotoxin, the heat lamp melted canister, which causes loss of cellular fluid, leading to dehydration in those exposed. In patients infected with this organism, breakdown of phospholipids like lecithin can produce myonecrosis in the muscles, shown here as the muscle necrosis crow. This myonecrosis is also accompanied by gas formation in tissues, known as gas gangrene, illustrated as the gas from the gang of green girls. Now, because of the heat labile enterotoxin also produced, this bacteria causes food poisoning and diarrhea, shown as the food with toilet. Placement of patients in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber can increase the oxygen content in tissues and slow the rate of growth of this anaerobic bacteria, depicted by the oxygen mask. So let's take another look at Clostridium perfringens. This is a gram-positive bacteria with a bacillus shape. This is an anaerobic organism which has the capability to form spores in unfavorable environments. It produces an exotoxin known as alpha-toxin lecithinase, which contains a phospholipase. Additionally, it produces a heat labile enterotoxin, which affects the gastrointestinal system of its hosts. The exotoxin leads to myonecrosis and gas gangrene, while the heat labile enterotoxin is responsible for symptoms of food poisoning and diarrhea. Patients with Clostridium perfringens infection can be treated via placement in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, as these bacteria are anaerobes and cannot grow in a high oxygen environment. Clostridium perfringens, gas gangrene, there was a lot of gas here. So, number one, it's a gram-positive rod. It's an anaerobe and it makes spores. It produces two toxins, the alpha toxin and the heat labile toxin. Can cause two different things, myonecrosis with gas gangrene as well as food poisoning and diarrhea. Since this is an anaerobe, the treatment is to give hyperbaric oxygen. Now please pause and try to answer these questions. Clostridium difficile is an anaerobe. Clostridium difficile can be treated by the metro and the van. And of course, it's a gram positive. All that we have discussed today is number one, gram positive. Number two, bacilli. Number three, all of them are spore forming. Number four, all of them are anaerobes. And then the first three were motile but only Clostridium perfringens was non-motile. If you go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis, they will let you choose your favorite review book and they will sort the picmonics accordingly. So this is my methodology to study using picmonic. Watch the animation and then watch the story animation. Watch it again. Pause and look at the picture. Just stare at it. Close your eyes and use your imagination. Open your eyes and see how you did. Solve the quiz. Get a piece of paper and write down the place of the characters in the picmonic. And then revisit the topic tomorrow, 5 days from now and 30 days from now. And believe me, you will be happy you did. It's picmonic, baby. What I absolutely adore about Picmonic is that they have free trials, money-back guarantee programs, terms and restrictions apply. You can use Picmonic on your computer and mobile or tablet. When it comes to learning, they offer you visual cues, audio, storytelling, read the script, and there is spaced repetition, which is absolutely powerful. And then you have multiple choice questions. You can even create your own Picmonics. They also have a community of learners where you can contribute and see what has been contributed before. We have compared between these four bacteria in the previous video. And now let's compare among these four. Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium difficile, and Clostridium perfringens. All of them are gram-positive. 
All of them are rods or bacilli. All of them are spore forming. All of them are anaerobic. Most of them are motile. Only one is immotile, the preferendans. Clostridium tetani, don't forget the exotoxins called tetanospasmin because it causes spastic paralysis. How come? Because it inhibits the inhibitory neurotransmitters. When you inhibit the inhibitory, you are excitatory. Clostridium botulinum, neurotoxin, flaccid paralysis. So this was spastic, but this is paralysis. Adults, canned food. Infant, honey, because it has the spores. Clostridium difficiles, two antibiotics that can cause it. Clindamycin ampicillin, two antibiotics that can treat it. Metro and Vanco. It can lead to three things. Diarrhea, pseudomembranous colitis, and toxic megacolon. Has two types of toxins. Toxin A and toxin B. Toxin A, enterotoxin. Toxin B, B is like the second letter, so it's Psi 2 toxin. Clostridium perifrindans, the food poisoning with diarrhea, gas gangrene with myonecrosis. How do you treat them? Penicillin, penicillin, no penicillin because actually ampicillin can cause it. Penicillin, this one causes spasm, add a spasmolytic. This one has a neurotoxin, add an antitoxin. This one, the metro and the vanco, and you stop the offending antibiotic. This one causes gas gangrene with myonecrosis. You better debride the wound. Quick recap. This is the Clostridium tetani. As you know, all of them are gram-positive. All of them are bacilli. All of them are anaerobes. All of them are spore-forming. It has an exotoxin. It affects the Renshaw cell. It inhibits GABA and glycine, which are inhibitory leading to spasm, rhesus sardonicus, lockjaw, and apostatinus. Clostridium botulinum, adults, canned food, children, spores in honey. It has a heat labile toxin. How does the toxin work? It inhibits acetylcholine. It can lead to floppy baby, ptosis, constipation, and diplopia because your muscles are not moving. Clostridium difficiles, two antibiotics that can cause it, clindamycin and ampicillin, two antibiotics that can treat it, the metronidazole and the vancomycin. How do you diagnose it? We do not look for the bacteria, no, 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 we look for the toxins in the stool. What kind of toxin? We have two. We have A, which is enerotoxin, affects the brush border, and type B, which is cytotoxin, act in depolymerization, damages your cytoskeleton. Can cause three bad things, diarrhea, pseudomembranous colitis and toxic megacolon. We treat it with three drugs. Two of them are old, the van and the metro, vancomycin, metronidazole. One is new, pedoxamycin. When everything fails, try stool transplant. Clostridium preferendans, gas gangrene, alpha toxin and heat labile toxin can cause gas gangrene with myonecrosis, food poisoning with diarrhea. Since this is an anaerobe, try a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Go to pickmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis link in the description. Try it for free. They have more than 1400 Pickmonics. You can create your own playlist, bookmark, notes, etc. In the last video, we have talked about these four bacteria. Today, we have talked about these four clostridia. But if you go to Picmonic, you can learn about all of these bacteria and viruses and parasites and fungi. Watch my first part on microbiology. A link is in the description. Picmonic has microbiology, pharmacology, genetic diseases, OBGYN. These are my favorites and all the other medical subjects and nursing subjects. It was recently announced that Picmonic is one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in the United States. To put it into perspective, in the US there is more than 17 million businesses. So this is huge. And this has one meaning and one meaning only, that students love Picmonic. You can download the Picmonic app for free on Android or iPhone. They have 4.9 stars and 10,000 ratings. Just think about it. So try it today for free. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. Thank you so much Picmonic for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. And Picmonic is here to help.